Joshua chapter 14, verse 7. When you have it, say, I have the bread. Forty years old was I when Moses, a servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I entirely followed the Lord, my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall thine have an inheritance in thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said these forty and five years, ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. But don't get it twisted. I am as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. I can still fight. I can go out and I can come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day for I heard us in that day how the Anakims, the giants, were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, you can be seated, and as you sit down tonight, will you prophesy to somebody and just trust me with this title and tell the person beside you, tell them, the victory is going to the dogs. The victory is going to the dogs. Um, uh, the Torah narrative has a lot of uh, protagonists and some are more dynamic than others. It's already called the law of Moses. Um, there's always an authorship debate uh, that Moses is the author of the Torah, uh, being the fact that it starts before Moses and it's completed uh, with Moses' death. Um, Moses, a very dynamic character. He's, he's, he's hiding, but yet very strong. He stands and speaks with boldness, yet it claims that he's the most humble leader uh, ever there was. Um, but when we see the narrative of their sojourn, their exit, their exodus through the wilderness onto the promised land, there are only a few that can testify of the entire journey. And the reason why I want to have this conversation tonight it's because some of you are in this betwixt place. Even, even when it comes to church, even when it comes to ministry, we're in this in-between. We're in a place where we, we know enough of the old school, right? Uh, we've been exposed to enough of the new school. You can't really put us in one of the other camp. We miss the old days, but we don't want to go back to them. Come on, when we talk about, oh, if we could just go back to the way it used to be, we've romanticized the past. <laughs> I mean, because people were more pure. No, there was some stuff going on then too. They just didn't have social media to communicate it. And so there are only a few that know the journey, that know the entire journey. Um, and so sometimes we, we skip over them. But the Bible lets us know that it was Joshua and Caleb. That they experienced the captivity of Egypt. But they also experienced the miraculous supernatural provision of the middle place. I want you to just touch somebody, tell them if you can only survive the middle. The 
only survived the day. And it's important that we have this, this conversation about the middle because in our prophetic, Pentecostal, charismatic culture, uh-huh. it seems like our jargon is always 24 hours. Yeah. In three days. We're strong in prophetic numerology. You know, seven days. And guess what? I hope it's the case. But we need to be honest about it. Everything don't change in 24 hours. Not for everybody. Just because you shouted don't mean that wall was coming down. All you're talking about is the seventh day, but you got to discuss the other six days they walked around and said nothing and nothing happened. Somebody shout the in between. Uh, this is why I, my, my desire, my passion in this day has been to be strong in apologetics in the defense of the faith that we will embrace ancient faith. Somebody say ancient faith. Because when I, when I talked about many of us who come from the old school or we've been at least close enough to it that we were helped shaped by it, every movement that has been in the last 100 years has had some sort of effect or effect on our faith and how we posture ourselves. Like the, 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 the healing ministry has had a strong impact on us. It's why now to this day we declare He's the God that not only forgives our sins, but he also heals our diseases. That that healing ministry and those healing teachers really drove home with us that healing was a part of our salvation. It's the children's bread. Come on. Wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are here. And so we embrace that. And oh my goodness, the word of faith movement. Because the word of faith has had an impact on all of us. Because we didn't grow up praying like we pray now. We won't decreeing and declaring nothing. Oh, not in holiness we won't. We were begging and pleading. Oh, Father, will you please? If it's your will, God. No, the word of faith says you know his word, so you know his will. Pray his will. So we got, we, we, we've all been impacted. Our theology has been shaped by all these movements because this day is different than the days before us. Our pastors kept us in silos and we didn't fellowship with everybody and we didn't listen to other preachers. Oh, y'all don't leave me out here by myself. But this day is different. We got to get the root, the faith rooted in us because now we go to everybody's church. We're exposed to everybody's church and never have to leave our house. And now we got TikTok prophets and come on, y'all not talking to me. We got Facebook bishops. Come on. And everybody is pouring into our vessel. And although we have gained great things from all of these movements, the cross pollination of our culture. You know, when we at one time we were we were totally set on if you didn't have it like we had it, you didn't have it. But now we've been a little bit more open. We've been exposed to receive from different people, different cultures, different denominations. But we lost something in, in, in this transition. We lost something in translation. That we only got faith for the 24 hour. And we only shout if it's going to happen in 30 seconds. And when I pray, he got to heal me now or it didn't work. My God. But the ancient faith says, Lord, I believe you to do it. But if you don't do it, oh, I done lost the church. If you don't do it, I'm going to still serve you. We got people mad because they got the wrong idea about God. Now people have shut down because they have the wrong idea about God. You think worship is the slow song after the fast song. No, worship is a posture. The song is just an expression. You can sing it and still not worship. If your heart is not aligned to the lyrics, you haven't worshipped God until you suffered and then you sang it. You haven't worshipped God until you stood by the casket of somebody God could have healed and 
he chose not to. You haven't worshipped him until after being faithful, you ended up with cancer. You tell me I've been serving all of this time. That I said, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, oh my goodness. That's, tell your neighbor now, that's worship. We don't need faith for the beginning. We don't need faith at the manifestation as much as we need faith for the middle. I need you to lay hands on your neighbor's shoulder. I feel my Holy Ghost now. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Give them eye contact and tell them God is going to do everything he said he was going to do. Tell them you just got one assignment. Live long enough to watch it happen. Live long enough. You got to fight through your fears. You got to fight through your frustration. You got to fight through the depression. Scream at somebody. Tell them live, live. Live, man, live. Live, girl, live. Because everybody who starts out don't finish. And I'm in a little different place in my life now. My goals are different. I didn't sing too much now. I started out in, in captivity. Now my prayer is simple. I just want to end well. Anybody other than me, come on preachers. Come on, come on brother Robinson. Don't y'all leave me out here. Tell your neighbor, I want to end well. See, some of us want to be famous to the masses. I would rather be honored with my family for the right thing than to be known to the masses for the wrong thing. I just want to end well. If God want me in this corner, I want to serve in this corner. See, some of you don't think you're successful until you got another position and you got another title. I'm like David now. After everything I've been through, just make me a doorkeeper. Make me a doorkeeper because I got a revelation. There are no low callings in Christ Jesus. I just want to end well. I'm not fighting nobody for nothing. I just want to end well because everybody starts, don't finish. But screams, they're screaming. Somebody tell them, you got to finish this anointing. You got to finish this anointing. I know there's some people who will start it and some people will finish it, but I declare I am a starter and I'm a finisher. The spirit of procrastination is being pulled out, it's being torn down, it's being your, somebody in this room, you've been going back and forth in your head over the last three weeks about downsizing the vision that God gave you. Somebody in this room, you've been going back and forth in your head for the last few days talking about, should I do this or should I do that? I need you to get out of your seat and run to three people and tell them, do all of it. Do all of it. God says, I'm increasing your capacity. Before I take anything from you, I add more to it for my glory. He says, I'm going to keep myself employed in your life. Where you're weak, my strength is going to be made perfect. Scream at somebody, tell them, finish! Let's just, y'all be seated and I'm going to close. Let me tell you, let's just be honest about this. Let's just be honest about this. Some of us, we are, we've been delayed. And it's not, it's not because of our decisions. It can be. So you have to take your own inventory. You know. But for some of us in this room, it's not our decisions that has delayed us. It's our association. It is. It is. It is. It's our, it's our association. And the challenge with that is, is that some of us are connected to people we didn't choose. You don't get to choose who God sends to your ministry. You don't get to choose who got married into your family. You don't get to choose your assignment. You only get to choose whether you surrender to it or not. And nothing is more frustrating when you got the revelation that we could be somewhere different than where we are. But it's hard to build with inconsistent people. And then you want to come in meetings with a whole bunch of ideas. You never did anything with the last idea. 
You always hearing God say shift, and you always hearing God saying transition, but you never hear God say stand still. Be ye steadfast. And so what happens is the challenge is we are ministering to congregations K through 12 in the same room. Repeating lessons. Rehearsing the same principles. And this is the revelation we need to get. This is the revelation we need to get. The Bible says it was Miriam and Aaron speaking against Moses. Now, we can get into a debate because there's a challenge with this text because it was Miriam and Moses, uh, Miriam and Aaron speaking against Moses. But the Bible said it was Miriam that was put out the camp. Now, that doesn't seem fair because God put her out the camp and then put Aaron out the camp. But I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you know the headlines, but God knows the details. See, God knows the whole story. And sometimes we judge our leaders because of decisions they make, but we don't know the information they know. There's an implication in the fact that Miriam got set out and Aaron didn't because the conversation probably started with Miriam. And that's why it is okay to warn new saints about old saints. I know this don't sound right. I haven't had any caffeine. I've been on a caffeine fast, so y'all just stay with me. But I believe I'm here in the Holy Ghost. It is okay to warn new people. How in the world can new people come in the church and they know stuff that happened in the church five years ago? Scream, shout, warn them. Warn them, tell them, no, this is who you fellowship with. This is who you eat with. No, you sit over here. Warn them. Yeah, what happened to the what happened to the young lady? She was really excited about the church. She hasn't been here to let what happened to her? Yeah, it's because somebody got to say, hey, be very careful, because see. You, I see. We, I used to be excited like you, but they'll use you. They'll use you. Just. And the Bible says Miriam got set outside the camp. And see, we could shout about that. Oh, she got rebuked. She got put out. The only challenge with Miriam being set out the camp is that the Scripture says that Israel could not move until she got back in her place. I need you to run over to somebody from your church tell them I need you in place. I need you in place. Because I've been delayed because of your disobedience. I've been delayed because of your rebellion. Our church could be somewhere different by now. Tell somebody we really could be somewhere different. We should have closed on the property by now. We should be breaking 500 on Sunday morning by now. But every time we try to build, somebody put their mouth. And that's why I'm in a season of my life and my ministry. I'm not convincing anybody to stay. No meeting necessary. We don't need a meeting. And it does not mean I'm mad. I'm not mad. I just need to know what I'm working with. Whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. Do it quickly. No, you got the blessing. Go. Go for it. Because I'm not giving you the opportunity to kick me in the stomach before you walk out. Do your deeds. If you tell me the Lord told you, now you have eliminated my opportunity to pastor you. Once you put a God sticker on it, you're telling me you're not open to my advice. So if you say God said, how am I going to debate with God? Tell somebody, and we're moving on. Delayed by association. The Bible says uh, Moses sent them into Canaan to spy it out. 
And they came back. They, they came back. And you know the story. Ten spies came back focusing on the giants. And two came back shouting about the fruit. So you're either focusing on giants or you're focusing on fruit. Now, I'm not telling you to abandon your logic. But I don't need people on the board with me. Then when we're talking vision, you have a language of vision killer. Once we cast vision, stop saying how, how, how. Start building strategy, strategy, strategy. And I don't mind questions, but questions need to be constructive, not destructive. And y'all got to be very careful because some people want to talk to sound smart. They never come with solutions to the point they hope you fail so to make them look better. But scream at somebody, tell them, I want you to make it. I want you to make it. I want to see every vision God has put in your hand come to pass. Tell your neighbor, I'm not your dream killer. I'm your dream pusher. I'm, I'm looking for somebody in this room that will celebrate the door God is about to open for the people that you're standing next to. I need to hear the sound of some vision pushers. Your pastor may not have everybody, but your pastor got you. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, be very careful how you dismiss the vision of my leader. Because tell them the lead, my leader's vision is big enough for my family to be inside of. Ha. Oh, sha. We're about to build something big. We're about to expand our borders because I got family members that are not saved that are on their way. The programs need to be in place. Come on, the structure needs to be established. In the Bible, the Bible says this. Let me go quickly. In the Bible says that Joshua and Caleb, they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Giants, yeah, yeah. But it's also fruit. It's everything God said. Like, it's everything God said. And this is why it's hard for some of us to embrace our encouraging declarations and prophetic words. Because God did give me the church. But when God gave me the church and we marched from the old church to the new church with bands playing, drums beating, they, the, the, the liturgical dance ministry was swinging flags. And we we're walking up the hill and everybody started crying and I did too. But my tears were different than their tears. Their tears were, wow, God finally did it. My tears was, what is this going to cost me? Because I'm not ignorant concerning. Every new level comes with another level of warfare. And I just been, I kept saying, I was nervous. I was like, oh, Lord, what's going to happen? Because I know how I suffered to get here. I know how I was stabbed in the back to get here. I know the betrayal I experienced to get here. So now I'm wondering what am I going to have to go through for this place? And I want you to tell your neighbor what God told me. Lay hands on your neighbor's shoulder and tell him if you've been worried about the price you got to pay for this new place. Tell him I got a word for you. You already paid for it. I'm not telling you you ain't going to have another fight. I'm telling you you ain't going to have the same fight. I need you to look at somebody tell them it ain't coming back up. He said for the Egyptians you saw today you will see no more no more forever. Touch three people in your section tell them no more repeats. Hey, hey. I know there are giants over there. But why are you looking at the giants? I'm looking at a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Scream at somebody, tell them it's already paid for. 
A whole generation and not while they were dying Joshua and Caleb were still believing that's why you got to have faith for the middle hallelujah you got to have faith for the middle you got to be able to endure hardness as a good soldier hallelujah sometimes you have to pull yourself together in the front seat of the car before you go in the house come on God ain't looking for no weak soldiers he looking for some strong soldiers Hallelujah, the Bible tells us that when you've done all you can do to stand, stand therefore. Hear me, hear me. The Bible says when they came into the land of promise, Moses transitions. And now anytime we talk about people, uh, God dismissing people, it's easy when it's a bad person. <laughs> but even good things have an expiration Jesus says, I know you want to hold on to me, but if I don't leave you, the next level will not come. And we were running around in the Hebrew year 5784 talking about, uh, you know, there's an open door. And I believed it, but every time I looked at the picture of 5784, the door looked closed. And I didn't want to go around telling everybody it's going to be a year of a closed door because, you know, it won't a good praise break. And, um. And the Lord told me to look again. Look again. A closed door is a good thing. Because until one door closes, you're not ready for the next door to open. I'm going to give you 15 seconds for you to praise God for every door that God shut. The door you didn't have the courage to shut. The relationship you didn't have the courage to sever. The people you would have never let go of. They let go of you. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. It had to happen the way it happened. I said it had to happen the way it happened. It didn't feel good when it happened, but I discovered it was good for me. It was good for me till I was afflicted. I thought affliction was a curse. I thought affliction was punishment. Until I found the scriptures as many of the afflictions of the righteous. What the Lord? What the Lord? I want to hear the sound of the righteous. Let the righteous cry. Let the righteous cry. but they still had to fight for it just because it's a promised land don't mean you don't have to fight for it and I need to say that because sometimes when God gives us a promise and we get in and it starts getting complicated we begin to wonder hold on I didn't think it would be hard like this if God wanted me to have it it shouldn't be hard like this but tell your neighbor just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not God And so the Bible said they kept, they're coming to their land of promise. But even half of the tribe of Manasseh could not settle on the east side of Jordan. Every tribe had a land inheritance. Are y'all with me here? Every tribe had a land inheritance. But the people had to continue to bypass their land inheritance. Because they had the idea and the command that nobody could settle until everybody had victory over their enemies. In other words, if I've been delayed by association, now I'm going to be blessed by association. I was at, I was at Green Rock Correctional Facility preaching at this prison in Chatham, Virginia. And when I went in there, the warden came to me and said, Bishop Young, we're so thankful that you come. We love it when you come. I'm just going to ask you, please stop stirring up the, uh, the inmates because it's a security issue. I mean, it's good. It's inspirational, but it's a security issue because when this happens, we can't cover you. And people are taking advantage of the, of the hustle and bustle. 
I just said, I just looked at him. I said, you know, do the best I can. You know, we got in that service and the Holy Ghost fell. Seven, seven young men got filled with the Holy Ghost in that service. Woo. One of them walked up to me after it was over with. And he said, I just want to thank you, man. Thank you so much for coming here. He said, I've been in here a long time. He said, you and I the same age. I looked at him. I said, oh, man. No, you and I can't be the same age. He looked so young. He said, I've been in here since I was 17. I said, really? He said, he said, but uh, I said, what you in here for? He said, I'm in here for, for murder, really? I said, for easy, but I didn't do it. I said, okay. He said, no, I know what, you, I know what you're thinking. But no, for real, for real, I didn't. He said, I know a lot of people say that, but I really didn't. I said, so what you in here for then? How did you get in here if you didn't do it? He said, well, my friends... They had them by, they said, we're going to rob this, they're going to go in the store, and they're going to steal. But him, he said, I'm thinking they're just going to flash mob the store. He said, went in the store, and the man, the shopkeeper, fought against them. He said, one of my friends had a gun, I didn't even know. He said, I was in the car, I was driving. He said, so my friend took out a gun and shot the man and killed the man. And he said, so when we went to court, he says, I never got out the car. He said, I never had a gun. He said, but I got the same sentence they got. When he said that, I got stirred up. I said, because I thought about that thing. If you can be guilty by association, you can be blessed by association. Some of you got family members that never left the house tonight. They never got out the car. But I want you to shout because they're going to be blessed. My whole family going to be shifted. Because of what's on me, I won't settle until deliverance hits my house. I won't be comfortable until my church shifts into a new dimension. Somebody open up your mouth and shout for everybody that got your last name. Somebody shout. Shout for your pastor. Shout for your reformation. Shout for your siblings. Shout for your nieces and your nephews. Shout for your first cousins. Some of them grew up in church and they're not here anymore. Open up your mouth and shout for them. There's no distance. Sound travels. Sound travels. Sound travels. Sound travels. Sound Bible say, Bible say, after uh, Caleb had helped everybody else, after he had helped the tribe of Manasseh and the tribe of Ephraim, after he had helped the tribe of Zebulun and Issachar, after he had helped everybody fight their battles, uh, after he had helped the Simeonites get postured in their land in order to see. The Bible says Caleb walked up to Joshua. And he said, excuse me, Pastor Joshua. I know we grew up together, but I still respect the grace that's on you. I know we were boys in the camp together, but now you're in a different place because when we grew up, you was O'Shea. But now you're Joshua. And so now I got to honor the new place you're in. I pray you got some good friends around you. They got your back like your boys. But they honor you for the new place you're in. Oh, because there's some people can't handle your shift. They can't handle the transition. But tell your neighbor I honor the new place you're in. Some people there can handle it as long as you stay in the same realm they're in. As long as you're on the same level, they're good with you. But I want you to grab somebody by the hand and tell them, do not apologize. For the elevation is about to hit your life. Do not apologize for the money that's about to shift your economic status. I didn't struggle all my life. And I will not apologize for what I suffered to have. Caleb said I supported everybody else. Where y'all at in here? I put
pushed everybody else's vision. I encouraged everybody else. I was a bridesmaid and a groomsman in everybody else's wedding. I pushed everybody else's ministry. But Caleb said, excuse me, Pastor Joshua. Uh, it's around about that time. Uh, give me... Give me my mountain. Uh, I'm a little older now. A whole lot of things have happened. Uh, buried a lot of family members and I've lost a lot of friends but tell somebody I still want it time has a changed God's mind the reason why some of y'all ought to shout because it's coming back to you and I'm not talking about I'm not talking about that old car it's coming back to you and I'm not talking about the house it's coming back to you and I'm not talking about some of those friends the reason why that you ought to shout because God says I'm giving you something back that man can't give you back I'm giving you time back and he said I will restore restore the years that the cake of worm and the palm of worm somebody just go like this time is coming back time you lost time you wasted time is coming back I gotta encourage you be not weary be not weary can well do it for in due season I said in due season you're gonna reap if you faint not push somebody tell them you better not quit you're too close now you've been everybody else's fan you've been everybody else's pusher he said give me my mountain I'm older now but I still want it I made some mistakes but I still want it I don't deserve it but I still want it I want everything that God promised me and I got good news for you he that will come shall come and will not tarry in just a little while come on pull somebody tell him just a little while Caleb said give it to me I got the deed for it and give it to me as I go to my seat tonight when we look at Caleb and all the names of scripture we when we see the names of scripture we see the etymology of these names these names communicate to us the identity and the personality profile of the individuals so when we look at the scripture we understand the name Moses for the name Moses means one that was drawn out of the water because this is a waterway there shall be light in the evening time the path to glory you will surely find it is a waterway ask your neighbor have you been to the water have you been baptized what did they say when they baptized you what did they speak when they took you in the water there's no other name I don't come to fight nobody. No other name that's given unto men by which we shall be saved. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess. Scream as if I tell him his name is on. You dropping names. Drop the name to that. So Moses, Moses means drawn out the water. And then you got Joshua. Oshea means salvation. But Joshua means Jehovah is salvation. But when we look at the name Caleb, it becomes a little complicated. When we look at the name Caleb, it becomes a little problematic. Because the name Caleb is not a name that means honor in its original context. But it's a name that means dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caleb's name means dog. And so God told me.
me to tell you tonight uh, that victory uh, is coming to the doors. Uh, them that have stayed by leadership. Uh, them that have served everybody else. Uh, oh my God. Uh, those who taken up the crumbs uh, and ate the leftovers. Uh, I come to prophesy to you uh, and tell you a shift uh, is taking place now. Uh, where the first shall be left and the last I said uh, it's coming to the doors. Uh, somebody said what kind of theology is this uh, when you can't build a doctrine uh, off of one verse uh, it must be line uh, upon line uh, and precept uh, among precept uh, then I take you then uh, over to the book of Judges uh, what the Bible says uh, God told Gideon uh, you got too many you got a whole bunch of members but you ain't got a whole lot of fighters you got a whole bunch of fans but you ain't got many disciples he said you got to clear out the camp clear out the office well then how am i going to find who you want to fight with me he said go down to the brook and watch how they drink and he said those who lap like a dog I'm going to give them the victory. Tell somebody, I know where the victory is going to. Hey, it's going to the dogs. Oh my. Well then, that's all the Old Testament. And if I'm going to make an argument for this text, I got to get a new covenant reference. What the Bible declared, there was a Canaanite woman who had a daughter that was possessed with demons. And she said, Jesus, oh Jesus, my daughter need to be delivered. And the response, and the response of Jesus, he said, it's not right for me to give the children, the children's bread to the dogs. And she said, surely, Lord, surely, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs. They come from the master's table. Scream at somebody. Tell them it's going to happen because the victory. You may not have been their choice, but your God's choice. You may not have been their ideal, but your God's ideal. Somebody by the hand you want to see God bless. I want to do this because you'll be surprised how many people feel unseen. You can be so faithful. That you you become forgotten. My God, my God, my God. We forget to say thank you. Yes, After a while, you always do it, so we just expect you to do it. But I want you to firm that grip up right now. I want somebody to know they're seen. Somebody may have labeled you low on the chart. But God told me to tell you, he got you on the schedule. He's got you on. He's got your healing on the schedule. He got your promotion on the schedule. He got your deliverance. There's a door that's about to open to you. It's on the schedule. You are not a 
The reason why, the reason why I wanted you to grab somebody by the hand is, uh, I don't know, I don't know what y'all call it uh, down here, because I don't even know if in Florida you even need this, but uh, in, uh, in Virginia it gets cold, and sometimes when it gets cold, your battery can die. And when your battery dies, I don't know what y'all call it, but we call it jumper cables. Hey, you put the positive and the negative. Tell the person's hand you're holding, tell them God gonna use all of it. What you thought was working against you, What made you cry is getting ready to turn around and bless your life. Oh, I feel it. Oh, I feel it. Pop, 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 pop. Charge that battery in the Holy Ghost. Ain't no more quitting in you. Shut up in the Holy Now listen, I know this is convocation, and convocation sometimes comes with a different mentality. Because we got our convocation garments on, we're thinking about our elevation ceremonies, we got protocol. Right now, for two minutes, I want us to shift it from convocation to revival culture. We're about to speak life over a dead situation. Somebody in this room, you've almost abandoned your faith that things can change and be different. But the Lord told me that when I get here to speak in this room, he's about to send a wind in the room that's going to catch the saints up. I'm telling you. Oh, you're going to accomplish in the last part of this year more than you accomplished in the first nine months. Oh, and I want you to know, I don't care where you are in your life right now. All of you that got the Holy Ghost, you still got something to give. The bones of Elisha brought a dead body back alive some of you in this room you anointed even down to your bones when I count to three I want you to open up your mouth and release a shofar when you release that sound of the shofar I declare to you just like a couple of weeks ago when we came into the year 5785 into this Rosh Hashanah. I'm declaring to you there's another level of grace that's about to hit you. What used to be a hard thing is gonna be an easy thing. What should have took a long time is gonna happen in a short time. Come on, hold on to that person because somebody is fighting a battle you don't know about. But when I count to three, I want you to shout for their breakthrough. And I declare to you, God is about to catch us up. I'm, I'm declaring to you, there's a spirit of acceleration that's about to hit every road in this building. One, two, three, go now, go. Think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me out of all the things that I've experienced in life. Nothing compares 
to accepting Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. If you are not saved and you have not experienced the saving power of Jesus Christ right where you are, ask him. Ask him to save you and he'll meet you at the point of your need. If you need to connect with someone or someone to pray with you, send your prayer request or call the number on the screen and we will be there to share Jesus Christ and the message of hope with you. I wanna thank all of you who have been supporting our ministry down through the years. It's because of you that we've expanded this YouTube channel. We've expanded all on the outlets that you're hearing uh, this message. So what I want you to do is make sure you share, make sure you subscribe and send this message to someone who needs to hear it. And for all of you who desire to support our ministry, there are ways to give on the screen. And remember when you sow into our ministry, you're not just helping us do ministry domestically, but you're partnering with what we're doing all over the world. The seed may leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. This is Bishop S.Y. Younger saying go with God because he's already going with you. God bless.